Oh, hello, my precious. Don't you look lovely? They look good enough to eat, don't they? Oh, I like to eat you, but it would be a crime. Oh, I don't mean like that. I mean like with soap and a scrubbing brush. Oh, soap and a scrub. Ugh. I mean wash. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. What did I say? You said eat. Oh, did I? D did I? You did. Oh, I meant wash. I thought so. Mm -hmm. They do look good, though, don't they? Who? Uh, them. Oh, the listeners? Yes. Mm, they do look good, you're right. Mm. Confused? I am. Yeah, you should be, because... It's the Jed and Jamie Show! Gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to my personal butler and scribe, Jed. Thank you, thank you, my trusty steed. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the fat wizard. It was portly. Uh, for now, let's just call him Jamie. Mm, I'm honored. You should be. <coughs> Oops, excuse me. Hmm, so uh, what can we expect on this week's show? Well, I believe we'll be resurrecting Elvis Presley. Oh, and I believe the children are our future. Oh, and children, it's time you learn some truths. Um, some things don't exist. We hate to be the bearer of bad news. But it's time you learn some home truths. Mm. The following things do not exist. Unicorns. The Tooth Fairy. The Easter Falcon. Don Burke. Kyle Sanderlands. The bottom half of Paris Hilton. What, really? Mm, not anymore. <laughs> Wait, uh, what? Mm? Shangri-La, Shangri-La, the scent of a meaty wonder bra, a cocoon of life so wet and profound, I blink my eyes, they make this sound. The only boy who could ever teach me was the son of a preacher man. A cupcake, two ringworms, and rehydrated potato mash, then the magic words, kraka, kabash. Newton's laws of ripe, fresh figs, the color of Wendy's Wonder Pig. I scream and yearn for the days of yore. A set of monkey's nipples on a rancid whore. You want me in? Okay, cool, excellent, brilliant. Bloody good timing that uh, that you've, you've asked us to do this documentary because we are in fact planning our comeback stunt. Uh, Mike and I are uh, we're gonna go. You know when those guys <coughs> over the barrel to Niagara Falls? Uh, we're not we're not doing that. We're going over in a car. When I say we're going over in a car, we're not going over Niagara Falls at all because that's that's in Niagara. I've always been interested in getting ladies. So I've been I've been in this industry for 20 20. Um, Nine and a half years, I was decommissioned. You kill one one bunny with a helicopter, and you know that's it. Stunt career is over. It's stunts. It's not bloody, you know. It's not bloody Sakudo. Is that is that the right word, Mike? It's not bloody Sakudo. I uh, started stunting uh, at quite a young age. I think I was probably uh, maybe four or five, and um, play schoolyard playground, uh, and I was on the swing. And I've, I've having a swing, I've swung off, and uh, I've, I've come off the seat and landed on my feet. And uh, all the all the kids in the room were they thought it was marvellous. They thought it was bloody brilliant. And, and that's when I was addicted. Uh, it's the first of many of of my addictions. Yeah, this the uh, nickname Skiddy. Uh, yeah, was well, my name's Mark Skid, and um, 
So when, uh, when, when you put the, uh, the name on, on a vehicle, they take the surname and put your first name underneath it. So I've ended up with Skid Mark. I just use this Skiddy because uh, it's my name as well as um, something you'll do in stunting. Heroes, yeah, uh, you know, well, you can't beat TJ, TJ Hooker, Magnum PI, no. Burt Reynolds, that's, that's why I got this. Uh, and there was that one with Lee Majors, he was another big, big, uh, because back, back when I was growing up as a kid, well, you know, as a young man, uh, it looked to me as though, you know, chicks really went for stuntmen. Um, and that's something I've been, I've been looking forward to that happening at some point during the career. Because stunts are, they're not easy. I mean, I've broken several people's cars, um, oh, a couple of clocks, uh, and, and, uh, and my finger. Oh, that wasn't a stunting accident, but still it counts because it's a broken bones. Evil can evil. he was another one too. He jumped over the Grand Canyon, something we'd like to do, but we don't really have the budget to get to the Grand, wherever that is. So I said, no, that's why it's got a bell on it. Then he goes, no, it's got a little tap. Everything that you wanted, I have done. You asked that the child be taken. I took him. Now, a certain wine comes alive when one is drinking it. This wine is alive! with the sound of music. Now, where was I? Oh yes, of course. Now, why was I wearing no trousers? Three simple words. My husband's home. And thus the Lady Mayoress said to me, Sir Geoffrey, you may visit me at your aplomb. I have no idea what she was talking about. Cheers to you, and I hope to see you on the mean streets of the wine trail. Wine trail as soon as we can. Here's to you, Mrs. Robinson. Mm. Oh, delicious. You are watching Jed and Jamie's show. Breaking back from welcome. Like I've got a case of opening night jitters myself. That should clear up any confusion. Yes, it should. Now, this week, I would like to broach the serious subject of colour. What? In particular, hair colour. Oh. Now, Jamie is obviously a uh, ginger. Um. Where is this going? While I, on the other hand, am a story sunset ash blonde. Here we go. What's left of it. Now, these gingers, as they are known, can be found both in the wild and in domestic situations. If you're ever looking to acquire your own ginger, I recommend drawing them out of seclusion with a comic book, an invite to a party, or the promise of contact with the female. Now, obviously, we're talking about man gingers. Uh, lady gingers are known as uh, redheads and are usually very attractive and buck the trend of the hideous man ginger. Now, once you've captured your own ginger, we recommend either having them immediately put down, or if you're like me and like a challenge, you can capture them, shave them, sterilize them, educate them for at least 40 years, and in the end, end up with your own half human, half ginger friend like my one. I have no clue who I am anymore. <laughs> My therapist charges me a group rate. <laughs> Woo! I'm fucked up and your old lady looks good. This is history.
That is history. They are history. He is history. She is history. Your history. We're history. This is history. This is history. Good day. This week, we're discovering the Australian history. Of Australia. history. <coughs> Australian history. Bonza. Indeed. Since the dawn of time, Australia has been a holiday resort for those from the Northern Hemisphere. Originally invaded 40 million years ago by giant kangaroos, Australia, or as it was then known, Terra Numbulus, uh, Cumulus, Australia, became a violent land of man versus beast as the American Aboriginally chased these giant roofs across the seas to this great wide big brown land down underneath. Yes. Unbelievable. But it is. Today, signs of this can be seen everywhere from Aboriginal cave murals to the television show Gladiators. While the Aboriginalis survived millions of years of beast battles, their world took a turn for the surreal in 1770 when fictional character Captain James Hook came to life and landed on their shores leading an army of British thieves. Amazing! These thieves and prisoners spread across the land like wildfire. Fire that burns away a lot of the indigenous culture and people. From this point on, things changed. Hmm, quiet. With Western culture came lattes, croissants and TV. But before that, rock and roll. The most famous musician Australia ever conceived was also their most famous bushranger, Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger, or Ned Kelly as his fans knew him, built the world's first portable toilet, which much like the transforming cars some Americans now drive, also proved to be bulletproof. He continued the tradition his prisoner ancestors began of pillaging the land while rocking out. Australians of the day loved him. A tradition of adoring criminals still continues in their culture today. Terrifying. Years later, on a bright summer's day, 1901, Australia became a country unto itself. No longer just a colony of the United Kingdom, it was now when Australians stood up and took control of their own destiny. Then, in 1915, Australia became everyone's best friend. Britain was at war. Australia answered. 1939, Britain was at war. Australia answered. 2002, America made up a war. Australia answered. And so the Anzac legend goes on. Never starting a fight, but always cleaning it up. As the country grew its own legs, sacrifices had to be made. Animals had to be killed. Many species became extinct. The Tasmanian tiger, the Queensland quoll, and the north-facing unicorn. But what some people would be surprised to hear, though, Dad, is that one animal changed Australia forever. Farla. This legendary horse started an Australian tradition that still stands today, claiming New Zealand's best exports as their own. Yes! I know! I told you. Oops. That's right. Australians made it their ambition to become a sports-mad culture. So much so that no one has beaten an Australian at any sport, at any level, in over 200 years. Extraordinary. This ludicrous ability with sporting-based activities mixed with their propensity for drinking alcohol has created the modern Australian, the Bogan. Essentially, every Australian in some shape or form is Bogan. Many refuse this label, but will very quickly reveal behavioural patterns of the Bogan when plied with alcohol and or upon hearing a Jonathan Farnham musical arrangement. Like trying to understand a James Rain lyric, we have unravelled that strange and wonderful past of the great southern land. Now you know something the rest of them don't. Throw another pimp on the barbie. Dad, 
This is history. Comedy, this is shit. Sunshine. That, the, I've never heard that rendition before, and I really wham disappointed. Wham disappointed. Wham disappointed. Wham. Do you know any wham? Can you do some wham songs, Megan? No. Get what? Get. Like, uh, you can just get if you can get the car started, mate. We'll uh, get this bad boy underway. Working. Oh. Ready to go. Oh, alright. Is everything checked? Shall we bow quick, together? Yeah, one quick prayer. Oh. Dear Jeebus. Mm. Alright, Dad, let's go. Don't call me Dad. Alright, okay. Mark, Mark, let's go. Mark, that's it, let's go. Bit of traffic there, son? When I say son, I don't mean son, obviously. I mean oh. Mike. You know what I mean? Oh. See, that's a, that's your perfect turn there, Mike. Uh, Mark. Yep. Mike. 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 I'm Mike. Mike. Your dad. Danny. Danny. Dad. Mark. Right. So what happens here is you take take it down into second gear. Uh -huh. Okay. Build the revs up. Yeah. And then once you get the is that second gear? I think that's, that's third. Third. And uh, go. First. This is going to crash into second third. gear. Third. That's third gear again, isn't it? Into third, into second gear. Third. Into third gear. Third. Yep. We turn left. And then with this, the power of this stunt here, we should be on our two wheels as we go left. Third. Yeah, we're in second gear now. Third, we're in third gear, aren't we? Wide width. Third. Second gear. Right. Second gear. Third? That's third gear again, isn't it? Third gear. Is that mum? Yep. No. Stop. Your mother died in a stunt. Right, this is this is how you do your average chase scene. So what's happened here is the uh, bad guys are on their way. So what we'll be doing, we speed along here. Third? Yep. We're in uh, second gear. What gear are we in? <laughs> And then, yeah, the way the camera crew were filming this. Third? No, no, hang on, wait. It's just out there. Is it lunch, Sean? Yeah. It's a bloody good idea, I think. Is it lunch? Well, actually, we go, we'll just go through Macca's. Where Third? Is, where is the. Do you know where the. Have you got your GPS with you? Who? Hmm? Oh. Jeez. CDs. Got a, got a GPS? Well, I can play music. Don't turn the music on. Can't concentrate with the music on. Hi kids, welcome to I'll Tell You When You're Older. My name is Gustav. This is Gustav. Oh, thank you. Hello, my, my name is Rustav and uh, today we're going to be talking about, and I'll tell you when you're older, horses and carts and their participation in the people smuggling. My name is Gustav. We will also be wearing 
each other's shoes. Bet you didn't know that. But first up tonight on I'll Tell You When You're Older, we'll cross over to Zustav and see what he's cooking in his outdoor kitchen. What is that? And they say, fuck off you little cunt when you ask, what is that? So tonight, we're going to tell you what everything is. That's right, everything. And we're going to sing it in a song for you. When your papa says to you, you're too young to know that too. Don't you worry about the thing, cause we'll tell you everything. If someone's wearing a hat, they're generally bald. If someone says you're fat, you're probably obese. If it looks like a tortoise, you should probably eat it. If you think your friend's a twat, you should probably beat it. When your auntie says to you, you're too young to know that too. Don't you listen to that bitch. You should burn her, she's a witch. If you're told not to drink it, you definitely should. It'll give you superpowers and a long woo woo. Long woo woo is a name for your penis or vagina. A long penis or vagina is the best thing in the world. When your mama says to you, you're too young to know that too. Don't you worry about a thing, cause we'll tell you everything. If someone says don't touch, I say don't trust. If someone says don't lie, I say I must. If someone says don't sit there, then shit on that chair. If you think adults are tall, you're probably a midget. If your adult says to you, you're too young to know that too. Take the glove down from the shelf and tell them to go fuck themselves. <laughs> about youth and youths and youths. I find you guilty. Guilty! 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 Well, another one bites the dust. Queen. Um. Well, that wraps up another show this week, but before we leave, uh, we'll leave. Don't you? No! That's what I'm